what I'd like to do is to turn this session over to my um, Ruth, um, who is on the faculty here, but we also actually managed to get her to come to INSEAD. So she works with our Social Innovation Center, which is where we got to know each other. This is start, start by, uh, by this talk about how the technology can provide social change in healthcare. Yeah, um, big ideas, well, difficult. Um, we focus more on the challenges, actually, so we don't have the solutions yet. Uh, while we begin with the presentations of the, of the panel speakers, and um, well, had, had of course a lot of great things to hear and really, really extraordinary stuff. So, if you get a chance to speak to the panelists in here, please do so. Um, it's really remarkable. We talked a lot about these trusted intermediaries, right, and community based uh, healthcare work. A lot of the stuff that is enabled through technology is still community based, but do we really know what? community means and, and how, how to interact with intermediaries, how to find those intermediaries. And then um, with regards to further challenges, there's, there seems to be still some basics. Um, so we heard one challenge being this lack of transparency of what works and what doesn't, who, who owns technology, who doesn't. And on the other hand, um, the call for where's the platform for this? You know, where, where do we know which technology for healthcare solutions have actually worked? And then, then, then one point, maybe not to forget, is the participation in the design of technology, right? Um, we, we speak about the technology in the product, technology in the process, um, but sometimes we tend to forget how does this technology in the end serves the, the people who it's supposed to serve um, in the area of healthcare. Um, so we want to see more and more innovative approaches of how to involve uh, the beneficiary actually in the design of when the technology is designed, regardless of whether it's product. Process. And, and with that, I could have a list of another 25 points out of this presentation, but I think I'll give it to my colleagues here. Thank you very much, Mr. The next uh, workshop was on education. It was led by uh, my colleague in the ITD UPM, Susana Munoz. It was interesting that uh, when we were talking about um, the impact of ICT in children, um, um, we have uh, seen that uh, there is a need to protect kids from technology, and also a need to teach parents uh, uh, about technology. Um, we have talked also about networking in education. Of course, all of us, we would like to make uh, uh, go into networks, to work with other people that is working in the same field, uh, talking about uh, entrepreneurs uh, that are people that uh, make changes in, in society as Pericles, as Tolas. Um, he has pointed out something very interesting. Um, we need people that work in what they like. We have also uh, comment the difference in between um, local action and global action, the capacity of replicating experiences. Um, also, the, the, the fact that perhaps uh, the, the way of teaching at the schools should be rethinking in, instead uh, thinking about using experts instead of teachers to, to design a new way of teaching. And uh, some other open questions that we haven't had time to, to complete, but I'm sure that during this today we will discuss in a coffee break. Excellent. Very uh, Content powerful uh, workshop, Susanna. Next workshop was, uh, was the workshop on agricultural and raw livelihoods by Esther. Please, Esther, go ahead. I think that our, the discussions were great. We had a sort of a group session which made it very intimate, and uh, everybody sat in a big uh, room. We had lots of good people in the audience as well, so we had a good, uh, good discussion there going to and through. I think that there were basically three strains of discussion uh, in which we sort of identified issues and possible solutions or opinions about it. Um, one of the first one, first trains was um, there is an issue around um, uh, nutrition. Obviously, if we have to feed 9 billion people, uh, the, the, the stuff that we grow needs to be very nutritious, so maybe we should work on, on trying to create more nutritional uh, crops. At the same time, we also need to diversify. 50% at the moment of the diet of the world is three crops, uh, while there are a lot more crops available, especially locally, so we should look into that. Second strain started basically with the conclusion that one of the main issues is 
productivity. So again, if you look at the 9 billion to feed, uh, we need farming to be more productive. So how can we actually address that? And uh, we said, well, there could be a, a great opportunity there for innovation in products. So can we create innovative products that allow farmers, also smallholder farmers, to become much more productive? And the third strain was actually the most difficult one, I think, um, and the most, uh, we spent quite a lot of time on it trying to kind of get our heads around it. Um, and that was around the fact that smallholder farmers usually don't have access to the market or to larger supply chains. So quite a lot of discussion there, quite a lot of uh, uh, different aspects covered, I think. And uh, lots of room for discussion left. Yeah, I think so. Very nice and a very nice summary. And uh, I hope we, we can keep on working on that further. Next uh, workshop was uh, Ferdinand on energy. Uh, is to summarize uh, the whole thing. There were different point of views how energy uh, can be decentralized and useful for off-grid um, uh, useful. Uh, my colleague Willem uh, told me one thing which I think we never really addressed was uh, we always talked about problems not about, uh, about opportunities to solve them. So uh, um, I think from the entrepreneurial view uh, where we all come from, um, we should uh, try to solve problems. Uh, and uh, we didn't come to an end, actually, I must say. We had uh, different kind of um, uh, ideas how uh, energy can be uh, provided and also how uh, sustainable energy could be provided. But in the end, uh, each uh, country or each uh, system has to solve its own problems by knowing what their area is about, uh, what, what sort of um, resources they can use. Is it hydro? Is it uh, gas? Is it uh, solar? Uh, and so there are so many different things which uh, is uh, there for you. So we didn't really come to an end and say, this is the solution. Okay. So I'm sorry, but this was very diffuse. Uh, thing and we had a lot of questions, a lot of answers, but uh, nothing really concrete how the, the world can solve. No problem. Yeah. It's a very good conclusion to have. Uh, well, we need to work further on this. It's not so. Yeah. We have so uh, a lot of challenges to solve. So that's the challenge for the next uh, workshops probably. And finally, we have uh, the gender workshop. Uh, this workshop was facilitated by Elena Rasero that uh, talked previously and Capitolina Diaz, who is uh, a professor of sociology in Valencia, I think. We start to say that innovation needs uh, to target women equality, women's equality. Uh, it needs to target, to target it because we understand that equality and empowerment is a question both of human rights and a question of human resources. No need to discuss about human rights, but it's important to discuss about hum women as human resources. We understood that uh, there is a strong power dynamics working on the um, women's discrimination. We are there, we are half of the population, we take care of the most important things because we take care of life, not only because we give birth, but because we, take, we care for the people around us. Uh, women uh, produce, produce and buy most of the food of the world, and women are there ready to be educated, to start business, to, to be empowered to do anything. And it's only a dy dynamic of power who prevents women from being equal as men. We understood that uh, technological innovations are a really good tool for change, and in particular, mobile technology, a particular good technology for change and for the kind of change that could help women. And we understood that any innovation, technological or social, addressed to women has a multiplying effect <coughs> because if uh, the, any, any innovation related to women immediately goes to their families, to their children, and, to, and through that to the whole of society. So the multiplying effect is something to take on account continuously. And uh, finally, we talk about a, a important social innovation that is the introduction of quotas in order to help uh, women and to, and to help any, type, any kind of social innovation. There are many fields of life in which if we don't introduce quotas, equality will be very difficult to achieve. And I think with that, I have a short summary. <laughs>